Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm a little under the weather today, but I need to talk about this. Custom profiles are very important. Sure, you can use the driver, and I often recommend just the driver if you are a brand new home printer of your own images. You really should start the easiest way, and that is simply printing with the driver. Load this image, which I make available on my Facebook group. If you choose to print on a Canon printer or an Epson printer, make sure that you're using Epson or Canon paper. Match it to the printer brand. That way there will always be a matching setting in the driver for that particular paper and you will get very, very good results. In fact, this rendition has been printed with simply the driver on the Pro 100. And that will tell you straight up right away whether your printer is able to reproduce that perfect image correctly or at least close enough to please you so that you have confidence on the ability of your printer to reproduce what is being fed to it and the reason i say fed to it is because is this image is not to be edited in any way shape or form you feed it to the printer and the printer reproduces it on paper and you get what appears to me a perfect rendition of that image. Now I know my printer is working correctly. So now I, I want to print, of course, my own images. Obviously, everyone does. That's where it gets a little hairy. I wish I had hair. Yeah, well, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Editing on a monitor that is not calibrated will cause problems and that is one of the unknowns you introduce into your mix if you will opening up that standard image without touching it don't worry what it looks like in your monitor print it with the driver match it to the paper type and you hit print and it comes out perfect you know your printer can produce a perfect rendition or near perfect rendition of that image nothing is perfect right but now you bring it over to your monitor and it doesn't match what your monitor is displayed. That means your monitor is not properly calibrated. Simple as that. That is the hardest thing people just don't get. Oh, I calibrated my monitor with a so-and-so. Well, you calibrated it wrong because it's not matching the unadulterated result that you get that actually looks perfect on paper. I did nothing. Opened it, printed it. All I did was match the paper type in my drop-down menu. Right, so if it doesn't match my monitor, then my monitor is wrong. Get it? So your monitor has to be calibrated, altered in any way, shape, or form to match that output. Now you know that that perfect output that your printer produced by its lonesome self, okay, now matches the monitor. What does that mean? Now, finally, finally, you can edit your images. So whatever adjustments you perform on your image is going to be then translated directly to paper prints. Okay, and you should get pretty much a matching result. So the problem seems to be that you do not get consistent results, meaning that some images print correctly, they match the monitor, and some images do not. Are you sure they match the monitor or they just happen to look correct on print? Okay, remember paper is reflective only, not transmitting light through those dyes or pigment inks. Okay, so they will always look duller. They will always be slightly darker than what your monitor displays. So when something looks dark on print, guess what? That image is dark. The only reason I say that is because if this printed correctly, without any kind of involvement from the user or the monitor or any other influence, if you print it correctly and then your image prints dark, it's because the image is dark. Oh, but you know, it looks correct on my monitor. Well, then your monitor needs to be brought down in brightness. Yes. So if you're using a color monkey, this is what people will not accept, but they really need to if they finally want to get a match. CD M2, 
of 120 is too bright, okay? It's entirely too bright. Now, people will chastise me to the end of the world for saying that. Mine is at 80, okay? And you know why? Because I edit in a dim room, dimly lit room. That is what you should be editing in. Okay, whatever. I know, I know. Oh, my room has windows. Well, you should find an area in your home. Oh, this sounds like a rant. Yeah, maybe it's my headache. Find an area in your home that you can then set it to a specific degree of brightness, dim. It should be uncomfortable for you to read a book. Let's just put it that way. And then darken that monitor. It's like going to the theater when they finally turn the lights down. Doesn't that movie look fantastic as opposed to the previews when the lights were halfway up? Yeah, they, it looked kind of dull, right? Too bright? Anyway, find an area in your home where you can consistently set it to maybe, you know, a 160 watt bulb. That's it. That's what I have in my room. And I edit under those conditions. My blinds are always closed. And that gives me a consistent daily editing condition. I set my monitor to 80 using the application for calibration. My white point is D65. Okay, that is standard. And guess what? This output matches my monitor. So now if I want to print whatever image I load it up, when I see it displayed, because now I know my monitor is correctly calibrated, I can trust what I see so that if I want to brighten it a little bit, if I want to darken it a little bit, I know that that view that I am seeing will be translated over to the printer. Yes, if you're getting inconsistent results, images don't have a mind of their own, okay? Yes, they have different color spaces, but that will not affect brightness, okay? Only your editing will affect that, okay? And if you are darkening an image because it looks too bright in your monitor, then you're darkening the image. It's going to be printed dark, okay? It's gonna look okay in your monitor because what, what, what? Your monitor is too bright. I know that took me, gosh, somebody had to hit me over the head with a hammer several times before I got it. And it wasn't until I visited a professional editing studio that my friend ran and managed. And I thought, what the heck? These people are working in the dark. Yeah. And they had LCD screens, high definition screens, even way back then. Okay. So, yeah, it was hard to swallow that. And um, finally, when I did kind of get the correlation between the ambient lighting your screen brightness and what the printer outputs that I finally got it. And now I can just print basically whatever I load will be represented. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about different papers. Okay, what happens when with this Canon Pro Matte paper it looks perfect and I switch over to some other paper. Okay, why doesn't my print now look perfect? What's going on? Yeah, mm-hmm. It might look different color-wise. It might look different in density, contrast, many different things. ICC profiles. That's where these come in. We're going to talk about that next. Okay, I'm going to go take some Tylenol. I will come back, and then we will record the next video having to do with this. And I'll give you some hints as to what to do to make sure that whoever you hire, even if it's me, to produce these profiles for you, is able to then produce the best performing profile you could ever imagine. And you are responsible for certain aspects of printing these charts, okay? We will talk about that and I'll give you all the details. Always long-winded, I know, but I gave you all the details. All right, so that is it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe as always. Keep subscribing, don't get mad at me. I'm giving you the best information that I think I can come up with. And the bottom line is that I am here to help you guys. Like and share. I left those two out. Happy printing, everybody. We'll get this correct. Don't worry. Bye-bye.